the Josh Johnson Show. This is Josh Johnson, joined by my co-host, fellow stamp comedian, Logan Nielsen. Logan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right, man. How are you? I'm doing okay. You know, it's, uh, this feels like weird to say. I didn't know this until this year, but, uh... Was that your throat? I'm so sorry. <laughs> what? I think that was your throat. It just went right into oh, the mic. Oh, maybe. I, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was jarring to hear. Really? Yeah. Oh, my bad. No, no, you're good. You're good. Well, yeah, this sounds weird to say, but um, July 4th is also my dog Rocky's birthday. And oh, okay. Rocky, <laughs> I can send you a video. Rocky is 19. He's 19. You were saying he was old. Yeah, yeah. Because this, this is the dog that uh, that's in Atlanta with your mom, right? Yeah. Baby boy yeah. is 19 years old. That's, wow. Yeah. That's old. <laughs> it's, so, it's so old that no one feels bad for me when I tell people that he's like on his last. <laughs> <laughs> right. No one like, like I tell people and no one is like, oh, oh I'm, I'm so sorry. Like I tell them that he's almost twin. They're just like, damn. <laughs> like no one it's that's the reaction because it's like because even when you told me because i was like i was like how old is rocky and you're like he's about 20 and i, I was like jesus like to and to me it's not like a oh it's it, you know it doesn't matter that he's you know you know not doing great or whatever it's more just like damn good for him that's a hell yeah. of a run for a little dog you know like, yeah no he's, 20 is rare in dog yeah, my mom gave him some carrots and ground turkey for his birthday, mm. and he doesn't see as well anymore, so he has to just go for it with his eyes. And the yeah. way he lunged at the bowl <laughs> was like it was like he was a puppy again. That was why that was like the most alive he had been in the whole weekend. <laughs> he was like, "What is that?" Oh! <laughs> no, he was wilding. Well, good Do for him. Do you have a good 4th of July? I mean, I didn't do anything. I was just kind of here. Mm. So, yeah, that's kind of my preferred way. Okay. <laughs> to spend the 4th of July. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. The the thing that I've been thinking about for this episode for quite a while mm -hmm. is all 4th of July themed. Because oh, okay. to me, just to me, it's where a lot of... It's it's a it's where a lot of America's uh, extremes converge, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of blowing stuff up. There's a lot of uh, cooking. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of arguing about the country. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a just lot a of, lot of like buck wildness that all converges on July Fourth in a way that we try to avoid on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, th I think you're right there because, especially too, there you know uh, this year in particular, I've seen it the last few years, but you know there's always people just being like, you know what, not celebrating this year, America and its decisions, and like totally understand that. But then people arguing about it, and I'm like, right there though, you're right now you're participating in the most American thing, which is having a petty argument online. <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredibly American. You are truly celebrating your country Ooh. by riling up strangers. <laughs> One of my favorites was, um, this is like a few years ago, because, <laughs> so I have fr I'm friends with a couple of people in Alexandria still that like, mm -hmm. do like, you know, um, EMT work, and uh, I think he's, like one of them's a volunteer firefighter, but I think he used to be an EMT and everything, mm -hmm. and some of these people would come into the restaurant and stuff and like chat and, and everything, yeah. so uh there was one where remember when frying turkeys was just getting big yes okay for the fourth of july i mean this person just needed an excuse i guess but <laughs> that's i'm like i know you mentioned thanksgiving we're not shifting to thanksgiving are we're we? not this at all a, this is a fourth we're of not july at all story this this dude <laughs> 
<laughs> this dude took it upon himself to have, you know, the American classic of a fried turkey. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Uh, I want to get sleepy and watch fireworks. Yeah. That's what I want to do. Let's it's handle actually, explosives while we're full of turkey. <laughs> it's actually the best the best way to to celebrate because then you get yourself real nice just, and sleepy off the turkey and then the fireworks mm-hmm. wake you up and you're just in a in a terrible state of limbo <laughs> for the entire evening. <laughs> Yeah. Just vacillating between dozing and startled. Yeah, it's oh. like taking cold medicine and then drinking a shot of espresso. You're like, <laughs> I don't know how to feel right now, and none of it feels good. There was uh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm digressing here, but just no, this good. is a quick thing. There was a kid when I was growing up who swears he swears that a. Uh, <laughs> That one Fourth of July, he was shooting the Roman candles. And you know, did you know you're actually not supposed to hold Roman candles? Yeah, you're not. Yeah. I think you're by rule not really supposed to hold any fireworks. But but I'm not gonna lie. If I don't hold it, how am I gonna use it? Because now it's just sure. a stick on the ground that's on fire, shooting at people's feet. Right. They don't Which give is you a what stand. A lot of, it's what a lot of other fireworks are too. But yeah. Um, yeah. They just don't give you a stand, but then they say don't hold it. It's like, well, then don't use it. I I think the don't hold it is one of those things they just have to put on it. It's it's like the it's like the warning label on cigarettes. They still want you to buy them. Oh, okay. You know, hey, get the get the Roman candles. Like, yeah, of course you're going to aim them at each other. That's the yeah. fun. Run around with it in your hand, but yeah. you know, wink, wink, don't do it. Okay, I see. That makes sense then, because this kid swears that when he was growing up, he was shooting off. Uh, Roman candles, and mm-hmm. one went into his uncle's mouth. Should have not taken a drink there. And it like he was like he was like it shot right into because he had shot a bunch not. of them around. But then when he turned, just the yeah. way, the angle of his hand and his uncle talking just went right into mm-hmm. his mouth, which yeah. made me wonder what Roman candle is. Then is it a little ball? Or like, what's the what's the thing that's burning up with color? I mean, that'd be like the various gunpowders or whatever. So then he just had gunpowder in his mouth. Uh, probably. I mean, oh, I, okay. I think that's what I think that's what's in Roman candles. But oh, yeah. okay. Because this is the <laughs> and thing. ever since then, Uncle Steve could no longer taste sweet. He I have no, <laughs> I have no proof that this happened, but when when that kid when that kid's uncle came to pick him up one time and he just was like waving by at us because we were sitting there talking to him when that happened uh i did see him smile and he did have a dead tooth so i mean maybe (laughs) maybe it's true maybe a roman candle hit him right in the tooth it's potentially related (laughs) and murdered it like Or he pulled up to pick him up, and he's just drinking. You can see it's a piping hot cup of coffee just steaming, and he's just slamming it. Yeah. Because <laughs> man can't feel nothing anymore. Imagine if that's your superpower, just not really having feeling in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that would really be a superpower. It would be just... It'd be a fun, it'd be a fun fact about you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but... Anyone you told to, they'd be like, "Huh, that sucks." Yeah, they'd be like, "That's really sad. That's that's a shame." That and that then they'd happened be like, you. "You know, eat this candle or whatever." It would always be, "Hey, eat something then." Yeah, just to prove it. Yeah, yeah. Chew, chew on this. I don't know. Bite this fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you want? But anyway, yes. Out of the sidebar, this dude fried a turkey on Fourth of July for mm. his family. Using (laughs) gunpowder. He straight up, this is like something out of an Acme cartoon, though, because he straight up built the uh, platform that the pot was going to be on, and then (laughs) the fire department was called to his house because he sets up. (laughs) He sets the whole thing up himself. He's very proud of it. Is talking about just doing that, you know, that that bro stuff, that dad stuff of barbecuing and frying stuff. And, you know, Mm -hmm. doesn't want to hear anything from anybody. Yep. He's in the zone. That's his his happy place. So instead of even having, you know how they have the stick with a little hook on the end that people usually hook the turkey to to drop it into the, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Instead of any the, of that, the bare the barest of safety measures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I have, a, I have a feeling this guy's about to skip over. <laughs> instead of any of that, this is and <laughs> I don't know if he worked there, but do you remember the stick man from? Ah, well, you probably you didn't grow up in like a black neighborhood okay so the stick man is like i didn't when grow you, up in a neighborhood period i grew up on a farm <laughs> i'm with you i i just I, I messed up in even trying to see if you would get what this is so no, no, no. the the stick man is like a guy who at a big department store or at a big clothing store where they mm-hmm. have rows and rows and rows higher than anyone can reach you hit up the stick man and then he gets the the suit pants or the whatever that's hanging up too high uses a stick to do it for sure right? okay I, so, i've seen those I, okay. that it wasn't necessarily just one guy at every store we went yeah. to but but you know was this this one guy's job <laughs> that's usually that one dude's job he's just he's the stick man he's the stick man okay Interesting. okay so then this dude is like <laughs> I'm sorry was, i'm sorry to get hung up <laughs> on stick man <laughs> Yeah, but just like you were just like, dude, it, you didn't grow up in a black neighborhood. Is that a black thing? Is that there's just I feel a like stick only man? black people call them the stick man. Okay. Okay. Interesting. I've seen it I mean, at maybe. like, uh, I've even seen a guy do something like it at a Costco and no one called him the stick man. Right. Okay. Well, it probably wasn't his only job at the Costco. So maybe just these yeah. stores, it was the only, he was That's- the stick man. Can I tell you that when that dude is not out sticking, uh, he is just on a Bluetooth outside of the store acting like he doesn't work there? So, yeah, that's his only job. That's a stick man. Honestly, sounds like a pretty great gig. It, it sounds like an amazing job. I'm actually down. I'm going to apply for stick man. I wonder if he works on commission. Because that would be amazing. Now he's just pulling stuff from the high floor for you. He gets paid. He gets paid off the dresses down. he pulls down. He's like, let me get you, let me get you, let me get you, let me get you. And so... You sure you don't want this one, too? I get paid a little extra for everything I bring down. So they used to... The stick man used to use a little hook that is the same as the turkey hook, right? Gotcha, yeah. Apparently, in some stores, they don't do that anymore. And it's like a little... It's a, still a stick... But the stick has a function now where it sort of bites the hanger instead of just unhooking. So just being a hook, yeah. Yeah. And so that's what this guy was using. He was using one of the bite clip things on a long stick to okay. hold the turkey, which is obviously not going to hold it well because the turkey is however many pounds and this thing is made for right. grabbing shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so a part of me would like to believe that he was a stick man, because that just, <laughs> that yeah. basically brings his, his work home with him. Like, <laughs> Well, he's got, he's got his own sticks at the house for practicing. Yeah, he's out, yeah. He's out, he's out in the yard grabbing stuff. Yeah. Oh, you, you want a trees. butterball? Let me get you a butterball. Let me get you a butterball real quick. You want a butterball and a blouse? I got you. <laughs> and so so then my man is uh is pulling the stick, and lets the turkey drop from the teeth of the hook right so like the the thing opens up mm. turkey falls and there's just way too big of a splash of course, of like course. there's just the splash is just ridiculous and so immediately the whole pot is on fire just explodes yeah yeah and instead oh. of exploding it does a james bond trail away from the platform that he's built because the platform starts to burn and that thing, I think it was made out of like Luan or something. So that thing goes up in a in a hurry. It looked like you know, like when a magician uses fire and it that magic paper burns almost immediately. Mm-hmm, yeah. Apparently, it looked like that because then it burns so fast that the that the pot topples over. So now he's just burning his own backyard. And of it's, course he is. And like a James Bond movie where there's just a trickle. You know, where somebody's like lit up a lighter thing right, that leads yeah. to thing. It goes straight to <laughs> the stack of fireworks in his backyard. And so the fire department was called <laughs> to his house because he nearly, luckily he didn't burn it down, but he nearly burned it down because the whole backyard is on fire. And then the fireworks are going off now in their in their packaging. Yeah. And uh, the funniest part of that story to me, when it was told to me, was that uh, 
uh, they had started, a family member had started calling the fire department as he was dropping the turkey in. So they didn't even wait for there to be a fire. The, oh, they were just like, this is going to go bad. They were like, <laughs> there was about to be a fire at 800 Cypress Ro- Like they were- Listen, I've, I've seen him work as a stick man, and this man drops everything. Yeah. So I'm calling now. There, there's I'm a lot ready. of dirty shirts that people are expected to purchase because... <laughs> Man, though, a, a an exploded, like, fried turkey vat, which then lights on, lights a pile of fireworks on fire. That right, that, that's like an American nativity scene. <laughs> like, that's, that, having that in your yard, that is celebrating the fourth. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Because I, cause I couldn't even, I couldn't even understand why he was frying the turkey for the fourth because it's such a thanksgiving thing and i guess Absolutely you can burn down your house at any point in the year like i guess yeah. you know you just really just need an excuse but even the barbecue <laughs> yeah barbecuing is safer and that uses more fire you know you actually bring <laughs> coals you bring charcoal to a barbecue right and it's somehow less dangerous than let me fry a turkey for my family. Also, on not enough notice. Like, it's not like they were coming for the fried turkey. That dude just wanted to do it. Just wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah. And so the guy from the fire department was like, hey, my man, just by the time we got there, all the damage had been done. Like, <laughs> like all we could really do is pat that dude on the back and, and let him know his grass will grow again. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it didn't nature, reach the, nature will rebound. Yeah, it like didn't reach the house. Even though, especially in Louisiana, when you're firing off stuff in the city limits and stuff, you gotta be very careful because a lot of the trees um, will cross over over the street. Like some of those trees are oh, so yeah, yeah, big yeah. that the fireworks can't get through them when you're shooting them up. So we had that problem when I was growing up. Um, there were these people who would put the fireworks in the middle of the street. Mm-hmm. And we were always just like, someone's gonna, someone's house is gonna burn down. There's no way it's not. There's right. like, like we can see the fireworks not clearing the branches. <laughs> so then <laughs> yeah. they would fire them off, and it would happen every year. And I couldn't tell if every year it was a different family or if the same family was just being optimistic. But right, it would. It, they'd shoot them up. And at least one or two of them, you would see bounce back down, and then everybody would run. <laughs> and it's like, what are we doing? <laughs> this insanity, then. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All of our best decisions are made on on the fourth. Everyone, everyone's really, really in a, a you know prime decision making mode. Now, did you have any barbecue on the on the fourth? This year, no, no, oh, okay. no, no, because we. I got home the third from us being in Arlington, and I like didn't sleep that night before, so I just I kind of spent the third and fourth just just existing, <laughs> just kind of laying yeah. out. I don't I don't do much either because like my neighborhood was had a lot of fireworks going on, and my dogs do not like that. Gotcha. You know, so it's just kind of it was. I I took it as an excuse to just like chill out. Yeah. Play some video yeah. games. No, that's fair. So I didn't I, I didn't I didn't do much. I didn't get um barbecue, but we did go to maybe it was the fourth or the third. We went to Red Lobster and that was great. That was mm-hmm. that was very good. Um I just I remember I think about all the barbecue that I've had over the years for the fourth or in or around that weekend. And <laughs> I don't know why, but it just always sort of like cracks me up how adamant people are that their method of barbecue is is the best. Because you're just like, be honest, you're mostly burning it. <laughs> it's weird that dudes get into a, a, a battle with each other of like, I burn it better. Okay. <laughs> right. The way I burn it is more efficient. I just put a flame right on it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a and I love grilling and stuff like that, but I have no real like pride in that. I'm just like I hope it's edible. Like, yeah, I don't. But yeah, some people it's I don't know. You, you reach an age where you just you need you need something to yeah. make you feel important. <laughs> that's 
what I think a lot of it is. No. I think it's just guys being like, I serve a purpose. I matter. One of my favorite, uh, like, barbecue, barbecue anything, uh, <laughs> is like, you know where I, I, I come from and, and how there are people who eat, especially if you live, the more rural you live, like, if you're in, like, marksville like all that like tioga all all those areas you know and you go hunting a bit more than people who are in like proper cities in in louisiana and stuff like that mm -hmm. then you know you're gonna have your fair share of deer and and other stuff stuff that's like a bit gamey yeah. and everything mm -hmm. and i'll never forget this dude said that he so okay i should back up so when I was in junior high, I was like friends with a couple of people whose family was more rural. Like like they lived in Alexandria and then their mm -hmm. family lived further out. All right. Gotcha. And these are these are I'm trying to remember if I get this. I'm trying to get this right. So these people that I'm describing are the direct family to the kid that I went to junior high with, but the in-laws are coming from like another part of the country. I don't even remember where, but they were just like not country okay. people. All right. Okay. <laughs> city slickers. Yeah. You could call them city slickers. All right. Huh? And so the, the city slickers come through for a, a 4th of July the quest, weekend. They're looking for Curly's gold. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's going to be a summer wedding. Mm -hmm. And this kid's big sister is getting married to this city slicker son of a bitch. All right. <laughs> God, probably a college boy, too. Yeah, probably a college boy with all types of, uh, probably got more degrees than a thermometer. Uh, you know? <laughs> this city slicking pencil neck college boy. Yeah. Coming yeah. around here thinking he's better than us. Probably wears a duck on his collared shirt <laughs> or a gecko or an alligator. <laughs> Making fun of us, <laughs> and so doesn't even go catching crawdads. He doesn't. <laughs> so so basically, they're all going to spend the weekend together, right? Mm. As they're spending the weekend together, this kid's dad offers to you know do all the barbecuing for the whole family. And since these people aren't from here, and frankly, they probably don't know what good barbecue is. They're they're all for it, you know. Yeah. Like don't don't come to me with like your I don't know Montana barbecue. Like I'm sure it's good where you are, but like if you're if you're coming over from like some big city in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> Uh, I didn't. I didn't realize the the people from Boise were the big threat. To, no, no, no. To Louisiana. I'm just joking. I think they were from Boston. I like they just the the vibes that were put out were very much like money Boston type things. Uh, oh god. When I yeah. like in earnest, they were people who Southern people would probably call city slickers if they lived in the country. I was gonna say yeah. If it's... Um, <laughs> But still, don't come at me with your version of barbecue. You don't, you don't know what you're doing. What you're doing is a version of what we're doing that's just frankly not as good because it's so cold in Boston that you need to keep your hands warm. So you're not even paying attention to the meat while it's cooking. You know, you need that. Southerners body make heat. good barbecue, but they make it unfun. To be honest, you guys are yeah, yeah. Too, no, no. You guys get way, you guys get way too immediately angry about barbecue. Yeah. Is barbecue and football is what will ruin for everybody. We don't yeah. care. We'll ruin yeah. it with college as well, where it really doesn't quite matter. <laughs> yeah. The, we do that in a lot of instances. You would think that for how seriously we take the small thing, we'd be better at the bigger thing. So then yeah. for as serious as we are about college football, you would think that all of our NF NFL teams would be amazing. Right. Like they'd just be crushing. And that's not the case. It's very yeah. weird. Uh, yeah. but they, yeah, they always, come cause even there, you got angry at no one about barbecue. <laughs> like even, even just now that I, I just wanted to, to illustrate a point. 
I had to represent for the story. I had to, I had to <laughs> let people know that the attitude going into this family weekend for them was like, don't come here. You may read more books than me. You may know who James Joyce is, but don't come to me thinking you have better rubs than I do. All right. <laughs> You know, yeah, yeah, with your 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 fancy starched shirts and <laughs> coming down here telling me how to barbecue. I know who you know who Shakespeare is, but do you know who Sweet Baby Ray's is? <laughs> <laughs> I celebrate a true artist. And his yeah. name is Sweet Baby Ray. <laughs> Sweet baby rays. You ever you ever just took a sip of some sweet baby rays right out the <laughs> bottle because it's that good? Maybe you mm. didn't need any meat. <laughs> you ever take a little sippy sip, huh? Just to make sure that this is the sweet baby rays you that you sure want on your chicken. You gotta make sure it's good. I like to what I, I like to I like to sneak a sip at the store just to make sure it's the one I want to buy. I like mm-hmm. to open and if up it's not a good, I put it back. I put it right back. I put it right. That's someone else's mistake they can make. So basically, they offered to barbecue for the weekend, and the people from from Boston, no, no, city the people slickers? from Louisiana, okay, offered okay. to barbecue, and so it, it was, sounds like no one from Boston offered to barbecue, but you had to let them know. <laughs> from, <laughs> Hypothetically, you weren't okay with it. From the way that he told me this story, it never sounded like them barbecuing was a threat or a circumstance they had to worry about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So is that well the way he was telling it to me was like was was that he was he was like we offered to barbecue and everything because you know they don't know what they're doing like so he went into a whole thing see that's the thing like at no point where they just like you know listen I really think we should uh, be the ones to uh, barbecue and uh, they never <laughs> they never wanted to they're visiting they know their guests someone saying barbecuing like that to me is almost as bad as racism like. <laughs> I don't like that at I was all. Trying to, I was trying to put a New England on it. <laughs> if you're if you're hitting the word barbecue with that uh that dialect from the fighter, I don't want it. <laughs> wow, there goes our fans in Boston. No, they they are great at a lot of other things, but I just don't want to hear them say the word barbecue. <laughs> They're great at a lot of things except for saying barbecue. <laughs> They, I would even wager that they're better at barbecuing than they are saying the word barbecue. Jesus. What? <laughs> Nothing. Some people should just say BBQ. You know? Oh, boy. So, they, they, they cook up an entire, like, feast, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't know why, but this is just funny to me, I guess. So, this whole story may be for not. But <laughs> but they they cook up an entire feast and mm. then as they're chatting at the table and you know they say grace and everything and then they start to eat, a couple of the people from Boston are like, Wow, this is the best meat that I've ever had. You know, what what is this one? And they're like, Oh, that's squirrel. And their yeah. eyes get like their eyes get like a little like squinty, just like, what do you mean? Do you mean it's like squirrel in the That's game a, or whatever? Yeah. Or is, like, that, is, like, is it like a dish yeah. name? And it's like, no, it's a squirrel. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, well, what's this one? And they're like, oh, that's deer. That's a bigger squirrel. <laughs> and where the people visiting lost it, they were like, what is this one? And honestly, I didn't even, I've never heard of this except for this one time. They were like, what is this one? Because uh, they also had a little bit of snake. They had some oh, snake, which is okay. which is wild. Uh, I don't know if they actually like hunted the snake or whatever. Because the deer and squirrel, you imagine that they hunted and froze for an occasion like this. But <clears throat> the other one, snake, I don't know. But the one that they said that I was like, hey, I'm kind of on their side, even though I didn't want to say in front of him, was skunk. Ooh, so they okay. had some skunk meat that they had barbecued that's, that's, up and everything. That's self seasoning meat, right there. And I was like, I, "That was that was when he said it." Where I was like, "Oh, you're like a little too country." Uh, yeah. And when when his dad proudly said skunk, one of the 
spit out their food like <laughs> like <laughs> spit out their food immediately and then the others were just looking around and you could see them all trying to not freak out like try to be cool but they're mm-hmm. all realizing that they're like eating the gamiest things like they were they were fully down to sit down and eat like chicken right. like beef brisket all that stuff which right. was there by the way so it's not as if it's not as if these people fed them an entire feast of just skunks right still though to get i love that this story had the preamble about bragging about barbecue and putting down their yeah. taste from it and then and then was like anyway we, we made you squirrel and skunk anyway here's some squirrel here's some skunk yeah and the skunk and the you could just see the family dynamic like breaking down because he was like he was like they were so rude they were acting all uncomfortable like they were gonna be sick and, and it's like you were eating the skunk just a second ago you even know it was skunk and I was like, yeah, you gotta, that's, war- you gotta warn somebody though. I was like, I, I was just trying to go along. I was like, ah, it's crazy, man. That's wild that they didn't want the skunk, you know? Because if I yeah. had been there, I would have been like, gah, 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 gah. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know what he wanted from me as he was telling me the story. Because even in the story, it's like, you're kind of in the wrong. Yeah. Like, like you didn't tell them a thing that I don't think anybody eats. Yeah, yeah, not really. I mean, unless the the most country people. I've seen people eat squirrel. That's not that's not even my issue. I could see how right. some people would be uh, opposed to eating it because they might be like, "Hey, we don't. No one is regulating this one." Yeah, like you yeah, could this, be eating straight rabies at that's, the moment. That's, that is meat you found. Even yeah. if you hunted it, you found that meat. <laughs> yeah, and that's also that that meat is also mostly bullet because. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no way at least with yeah. a deer i'll take my bullet medium rare please yeah you could shoot a deer and then eat all the deer there's that a you lot didn't more shoot. deer a lot of other deer that you did not shoot but when you shoot a squirrel and it explodes i'm assuming there's <laughs> nothing left to eat <laughs> they use small caliber it's it's you know but but no still you gotta i'll tell you right now I I don't even know how there was enough squirrel to go around. They must have shot ten thousand squirrels. Yeah, they found a community of squirrels <laughs> and just laid like laid bare in whatever oh. squirrel cave they were in. Yeah, <laughs> because there's no way that there was enough squirrel to really go around. Um, yeah, I just I remember him being like truly indignant and i honestly didn't know what to say (laughs) yeah because how do you (laughs) because you know you can't disagree because he's angry that people didn't love his surprise skunk uh so you know he's not going to be open to uh you know a counterpoint but um (laughs) yeah but but how how do you get excited about it maybe you just put a table setting with a black and white streak on it yeah, there just you so go. people know where the skunk is. Yeah, I I think I think generally most uh, you know mysterious meats should be labeled. Go yeah. ahead and just put just put with the species, <laughs> so yeah, I can mentally prepare. Because I'm not even saying an absolute unequivocal no. I'm just saying let me make yeah. that decision for let myself. Me, exactly. Let me decide. I'm not saying I won't try it. Even you know what I mean. But just. Let me know what I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah. Because the fact that, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly how they reacted that was so offensive, but I imagine they reacted like if you told someone it was cat. Yeah. Because they, they, yeah. apparently one person spit it out immediately, and then the other people just were like, kind of getting like, oh, is it hot in here? <laughs> And then they left like soon do I, after. Do, do I smell? Am I turning into a skunk? Yeah, yeah. Like, like soon after people... they found out it was skunk, they left. Which is interesting because it's it's like, I mean, it, it's an animal. It's no it's no grosser than the animals we already eat. It is just funny how like if you're used to eating a certain type of animal, you're not immediately disgusted by it. And it like 
I don't know what kind of Romeo and Juliet rift it caused between his big sister and the person that she was supposed to marry. Because oh, it's yeah. Because like, they're, they're there to like <laughs> The marriage didn't other. happen. That'd be so funny. <laughs> if the, It's from that meeting. If they were... <laughs> If they were like, no, no son of mine is going to marry yeah. some skunk eater. You're not, you're not marrying that filthy skunk eater. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a Kennedy now. Yeah, I was like, isn't that just JFK? Yeah, well, they were, they were from there. They were from Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that was a very specific I, one. Uh, I uh, will, uh, will uh, not allow my son to uh, marry some filthy skunk eater. <laughs> It would be even funnier if one of them, especially for how he was describing them of just very like hoity toity, whatever, it would be very funny if one of them did kind of get some rabies. Like that, like just a little bit. Like just like if they went back to their yacht club and they were like, <laughs> I say, Jefferson, you're foaming at the mouth. <laughs> uh, back up or I will uh, fucking bite you. Uh, <laughs> I bet too they weren't hoity-toity at all i bet that's just his version of them in the story because the skunk put them off i bet they showed up and were just nice and were trying their best and then they were like what's this skunk and he's like these fucking (laughs) these uppity assholes thinking they're better than us it's like no you just most people don't eat skunk yeah 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 oh i guess you're too good for our snake I guess look, you're too good for the meat I found look, in the woods. <laughs> look at the city slicker who thinks that he's too good to eat a sack of venom. Because <laughs> some people don't know what they're doing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. There are some people that are like, oh no, that little that little pebble, you can eat that. That's just a little rock. <laughs> <laughs> a little rock good for you. Yeah, One of my rock every now and then. favorite like snake things was, um, and then this is this is one of those things where we we went to I think it's in Marksville. There's a guy called the Rock Man, and we went there every year in, in my elementary school as a field trip about like geology and stuff. And he's he's so sure your area just doesn't have people whose sole identities are just singular objects. The Stick Man, the Rock Man, the Stick Man, the Rock Man. <laughs> skunk man there was a firework man so firework yeah man. yeah see i think <laughs> now i'm wondering if this is just your area that everyone yeah. is just assigned their object yeah everybody just has a job that they can't quit because i yep. live in <laughs> here's your blunt tool place. and your identity here you yeah. go you are stick man now so we would go to the rock man every year and this dude had all types of rocks for like lots and lots of different prices so he was making money because as kids we'd be like oh i'll buy this one dollar rock that looks very cool and is polished and purple and everything like that and then he had the crystal people like the really like out there hippie people would buy crystals from him and stuff and then he would just have these beautiful um like i don't even know what you would call them but it's like when you cut a rock in half and there's like all these shards of amethyst and everything that's like aren't those geodes yeah yeah so he would sell the biggest geodes i've ever seen in my entire life damn so i've been to a couple places like even sally and i were in arizona and we went inside this rock shop that had some pretty big ones for like a good chunk of change but still was like nothing compared to what this dude had because he had essentially dedicated his life to it and he was like kind of the rock man yeah he was kind of like a self-taught geologist almost because he would describe to us what the differences in the rocks were, but he wasn't, I don't think he held any degree or anything. He just had right. an internet connection and the will to dig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the will to dig. And so this dude told us, and then we saw it as well. And it was, th- this whole thing was way more terrifying than I think they thought it would be cool. And it was just scary. Um, we go on this field trip and the guy lives on his property that he sells the rocks from. And he talks about how one day he was going to the bathroom and he felt something. Um, And when he stood up and turned around, a rattlesnake was in his toilet. And so the rattlesnake in his toilet jumped out at him and he managed to dodge it. And then like 
promptly stomped it to death, right? <laughs> but then, and then he, he cooked it up for his friends from Boston. <laughs> then he made a toilet seat cover out of it. And it's in the bathroom right now. And, and it was one of those things where I really had to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Like, even as he was telling this story, I was holding it. Right. And so then I was like, should I just piss myself? Because, <laughs> because he didn't make it sound like another snake couldn't come through the toilet. <laughs> He wasn't clear that it was an isolated incident. Yeah, he was just like, I killed the last one that did it. I'm like, hey, what? Don't tell me that and then be like, oh, and by the way, it's it's at the end of the hall to the left. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, if you go down the hall, that's the snake room. Sorry, bathroom. Uh, if you go in there, I forget because there's always so many snakes in there. <laughs> And then I see. I've never it. heard of. I've I've heard of like snakes getting toilets. I've never heard of a rattlesnake getting into a toilet. I didn't think that was a thing they liked was being in water. Like well, that, I mean, but. when you well, it, there wasn't much water in the bowl. Like this dude, this dude is living <laughs> on the slightly off the grid. Like he's on the grid enough for us to find him, but he's not. He's not really there. Because <laughs> uh, when you go to his property, you're like rattlesnakes would love this. <laughs> I love that this start is like, uh, oh, this is going to be a 4th of July episode, but really, this has just been a very telling episode about where you're from. <laughs> this has been a really... Hey. This isn't this isn't about America, everybody. It's about Louisiana. <laughs> Look, this is about celebrating heritage. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the stick man is my new 4th of July mascot. You know, the 4th kind of needs one. We don't have a good... <laughs> It's just just a guy grabbing stuff with a stick. The stick the stick man's here forever. As long stick as there man. are oversized uh, department stores that are overstocked, mm-hmm. there will be a stick man. As long as there are shelves, there will be stick men. <laughs> God. Uh, by the way, it is uh, like just after 1 p.m. on July 6th, and I just heard some fireworks going off. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, that we're There's recording. There's nothing it's, like the late They're ones. popping off right now, yeah. There, there's nothing like the really, really late ones where it's like July 8th, mm-hmm. but you still got some leftovers. When I'm going to get my money's worth, okay? I'm not, take, I'm not taking a bath on these fireworks, all right? <laughs> <laughs> taking a bath? <laughs> Is that what you say? I've heard that phrase before. Taking a bath on if you, these if you, if you're getting, Yeah, especially if you're like getting screwed on something, but I, I, I ain't going to lose money on this. Oh, right? man. I remember in, I think we talked about it before, but like our old neighborhood in Chicago that we lived in in Rogers Park, like that was a straight month of fireworks. Yeah. Yeah. It would start two weeks before the fourth and it would go two weeks after. And yeah. like clockwork too. It was a full month of just <laughs> explosions. Now, I, yeah, because I guess I've never told you all of these things are happening in tandem right now. I've never told you about the firework man. Um, no. Okay, so this dude owns... See, I'm getting introduced to the Louisiana Avengers here. <laughs> yeah. Stick Man, Stick man Firework Rock man, man, and Rock Man. Firework. I'm sure there's a couple... I'm, I'm sure there's a couple others that I'm just forgetting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's one of them that I've never told you about because it's just too... Yeah. Okay. Um, so the firework man. <laughs> well, that was fucking ominous. Yeah, it's it's like I don't I don't even think you'll enjoy the story. Uh, there, <laughs> the firework man uh, owns like an entire. What would you even call it? It's not like. It's basically kind of like the the what do you call the thing that the eighteen wheeler wheeler is dragged. So you know how there's like the bed of a truck is behind the yeah okay when you have an 18 wheeler sure what's the front of it called the cab okay so what's the cab pulling the trailer okay the the trailer i guess the way i'm trying to describe exactly how it looked because the people especially i went to elementary school with will probably the big box the big box with wheels the big box with wheels also works i guess uh (laughs) But basically, the the way that this works is um, 
he had converted like three 18 wheeler type trailers together um all to like sell all the fireworks that he had and then they okay. they would flap up like he had truly converted them like he had he had cut holes in them so that there'd be an awning when he opened it up and everything and it was i think just outside the city limits so that you could so buy from him this is like a traveling mini mall he's he's invented yeah but he leaves it there that's the crazy thing though he leaves it there all year and he only sells one month out of the year so I don't know if he actually leaves the fireworks in there all year, but you know that whole thing and that whole plot of land that he yeah. seems to own is like all a Halloween superstore. Yeah, <laughs> just sits there for the rest of the year unused. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, uh, who was it? I remember like a few people that I grew up with bought from him, and I'll never forget. I never got to like meet this dude or anything because also you never know. It's like sometimes. You just have to be like careful around certain people because, like, I'm not putting this on him, but like, I'm pretty sure that he sold some fireworks where I was a little like, Oh, are you, are you like a bad the, person? Like, I don't know. <laughs> are you, are you like the Unabomber? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause he'd sell some that like, you're you're like I've never seen any, like, he'd have the sparklers and he had the Roman candles, all the stuff you're supposed to get, right? But then. <laughs> I remember one time this this kid was talking about going there with his dad and then uh, trying to buy this big one from him because basically his dad wanted to save money. So rather right. than getting a bunch of the little ones that they have to keep popping like all day to nothing, because right. especially I think that's just like a dad thing, like not just the saving money, but the we're not going to pop these off when it's still light out. Well, I want to get the full, yeah, the, the, get full the full experience, effect. yeah. And so, so he was selling these things with like long, insane names, like the, like the uh, rocket triple launcher and all this, all the stuff like that that was set up to keep popping inside of it. So think of like a Roman candle that's like stocked into the into the ground, um, and it's going to okay. have all the designs and stuff. So he's selling like these. Almost like uh, the Chinese ones with like dragon designs and stuff like that. They're supposed to okay. do. And then he, there was this one where it was just like a box that didn't have any. It had like a label in Sharpie, and he's like, "What's this one?" And the guy's like, "Oh, I made that one myself." <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, oh, okay, that sounds sounds rough." Yeah, <laughs> doesn't sound great. Sounds like you don't even know if this will work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want a firework that'll explode in the air, not <laughs> not two feet off the ground. No, no, it'll get you throw it. Yeah. It'll get it'll get in the air. It just needs a little help, all right? <laughs> and then uh there was one You wanna be like on a roof or something? Then yeah, yeah, yeah this is the one for you. <laughs> I feel like uh he was probably just trying to upsell, but uh <laughs> this kid said it's like an urban legend about him, I guess. This kid said that he grabbed, um, what was it? Oh, it was boy, like, but you, you need to finish this sentence, though. He grabbed, like, <laughs> a square-type firework from him that was, like, a okay. one-shooter. And he was like, how oh, much is this? Oh, my kid grabbed. One? For a second, you're like, an urban legend about him. He grabbed, and I'm like... <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why it's kind of like you gotta say the end of the sentence. Oh my bad. No, because no. the fireworks man sounds like someone who would have rumors about him. <laughs> <laughs> and so he he grabbed this like square little packet that was a one shot, like you just light it goes off. And okay. uh, and then the kid was like, "How much is this one?" And the dude was like, "Oh, that'll take your finger off." And just took it back from him. And I get, I guess he wanted him. <laughs> I guess he wanted him to be like, no, let me have it. And then he could like upsell it. Right. But <laughs> once he said, take your figure off, the kid was like, fair enough. We've purchased That's a lot. <laughs> we have a, we have a other assortment of child endangerment that we've already <laughs> purchased. Uh, you can keep that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. The fireworks man, huh? Fireworks man. 
I mean, who knows? That dude was probably just Greg to most people, and kids called him the fireworks man. Like, yeah. I don't know if that thing spread the way that I'm putting it out there as if it did. I know I call I, him the fireworks man, right? but my friends and I don't account for the rest of the whole town. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that for for some of these people, they are just known by their name, and that's it. Like probably, the yeah, stick probably. man is probably just Charlie. That's Charlie. Everyone knows. Hey, get Charlie. He'll get it down. Yeah. And someone's like, someone's like, go get the stick man. They'll be like, he has a name. Now, to be fair, and it's Charles. To be fair, the entire class and school that would come called him the Rock Man. That dude was the rock man. See, I think that's different though when you do a thing like where you work with kids, then you yeah, you he, you want to be the something man. He had, he had plenty of opportunities to tell us his name. Yeah. We used to have this this guy who he like worked for I think he worked for like the DNR or whatever around. He was kind of a a, a not like a nature expert, but he'd come around and always do it. And we his name was Dan, and we all just started calling him Dan Dan the Nature Man. And I think just that still is just within like all the kids still, because I subbed there and he was around and I heard some of them refer to him as Dan Dan the Nature Man. I'm like, I think we started that and that just stayed as school parlance. <laughs> like then, all the kids now just know him as that. I don't think anyone else calls him that. I think it's just stayed in the middle school ever since I was there. <laughs> I like how I, I like to think he likes it enough that his name is just Bobby, but he just goes with it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm Dan Dan. <laughs> well, his name is Dan. His name is actually Dan. So it, it's. How do we know? Yeah. If he lets wanna... nicknames take off, how do we know he, he doesn't let the wrong name take off? <laughs> That's true. He just snaps one day. He's like, it's Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I know that doesn't rhyme with nature man, but my name is Robert. Uh, hey, man, should we open up the mailbag? Yeah, let's do it. Especially since uh, we didn't do it last time. Oh, yeah, that's right. Let's do some of these ones I meant to do last time. These are some uh, about our 100th episode, but um, my camera died. Uh, this one here, this is from Lizzie, and uh, the title is To President Squeaks. And uh, uh, it says, Hiya, uh, if you don't feel comfy reading this on the pod, it's fine. But after a long while of listening, I felt the need to voice my thanks and also so very cheekily ask maybe a favor. I started listening in October 2020, I believe, and shortly after got acute pancreatitis. I'm sorry, Logan, but having Mr. Squeaks in A and E. What is A and E? That must be a, something hospital. I don't know. Hmm. But Mr. Squeaks and A&E was wonderful company as a painfully chronic ex- extrovert in hospital quarantine. You're 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 welcome. I think I'm not sure how to. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, I have had a rough few years, and you two have got me through it, but this email isn't about me. My sister, Alice, who loves the pod, is six months sober tomorrow. This would have been from last week. Uh, and no matter when or how you read this, if you could wish her a happy six months, it would make my year. Uh, so incredibly grateful, Lizzie from London. Uh, hey, Alice. Congratulations. You did it. Hang in there. Hey, Alice. Alice. Happy six months. Happy six months. Good for you. Staying strong, doing your thing, kicking ass. Uh, and, and also thank you, uh, Lizzie, for that uh, email. Yeah, thanks for letting us know. We're glad we could keep you company, you know? Yeah. Oh, so this is about, um, I think it was our 99th episode. So this is uh, from, just says NWE, um, and longtime listener, curious about Open Mouth Puppet Master. <laughs> That sounds like a like a personal ad in like the yeah. classified. Yeah. Seeking open mouth. <laughs> open mouth puppet master. Wow. Uh, uh, dear Josh and Logan, I'm emailing you in regards to episode 99, say something dummy. Did the friend that went on the date with the puppet master ever tell them that the restaurant was making fun of them by prolonging his act? I kind of feel bad for the guy if I was on the date, even if he was bad at the act. I would have told him that and told the restaurant off for choosing to humiliate him that way. Um, um, two things. To my knowledge, no. And right. then second, this doesn't seem like someone you can humiliate. 
like <laughs> from what she told yeah. me, it seems like even if you had been like, stop, they're making fun of you, he'd be like, still getting some practice in. <laughs> She's still talking through the puppet. I here's the thing too. I kind of feel bad for him too, but that is immediately offset by the fact that he brought his ventriloquist dummy to a date. So yeah. I no longer you know, it's hard to it's hard to feel bad for a terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to, Cause also he planted it somewhere. And Ooh. that's the part that hangs me up the most. Yeah. Is that he had it at the ready somewhere. If it wasn't outside in his car, any other option aside from that is fucking wild. Yeah, it's actually wilder if it's at coat check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and someone had to yes. give him his dummy back. And he's not leaving. <laughs> Yeah, and then he's got to get the, the puppet has to get its card to get its coat. <laughs> uh, let's read this one since we we literally just saw this person, but this is hundred hundred episodes. Uh, hi J Lo Goss, this is from our friend Allie. Uh, hey Josh and Logan, I can't believe you're almost at 100 episodes. I mean, we've already done it. They sent this right before. Uh, congr- <laughs> congratulations on the success of this podcast as well as your individual successes. Um, you're both killing it, and I'm proud of you, even though I don't know you like that. Hey, I'll still take it. Yeah, yeah. I it love still a good proud a of you. I'm yeah, never going to deny of you. it. I, yeah, from anybody. Anyone can say they're proud of me, and I'll be like, nah, thanks. Doesn't matter. That's good. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite episodes was Getting Zen with Joshi when you talked about meditating. I'm heavily invested in learning about emotional regulation, and a lot of things Josh said resonated with me. Plus the Eastern... F- plus... <laughs> okay. I almost read this wrong. Plus, Eastern philosophy fucks. That's how. <laughs> uh, uh, I also appreciate how in discussing meditation, it slowly became a critique of capitalism. <laughs> Nothing but solid truths. I didn't remember that it's the same episode with the story of, of the weed head grandma, which made me love it even more. Uh, as a frequently zoinked individual, I fully support this woman and hope she one day gets to gnome the mailman. This that sentence was full of so many in references to our show. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was perfect. Yeah. Uh, for future episodes, I'd love to hear more esoteric, anti-capitalist, bad review, stonery, goth, and or emo stories. Uh, Logan's puns are a must, especially because Josh hates them. Uh, speaking of goths, I made some drawings for y'all to add to your collection of broody fan art. I drew Josh as a traditional slash vampire goth because I get that vibe from him. And since he's a self-proclaimed vampire hunter, uh, originally he had eyebrows, but I removed them because that look goes hard. <laughs> Uh, for Logan, I gave him a punk goth look to match his bold disposition with spikes of his leather jacket to ward off any small talkers. <laughs> he listens to Nick Cave and the bad squeaks, obviously. I also gave him an almost mohawky hairstyle that is closer to emo than goth because he thinks MCR is goth when they are, in fact, emo, though this is widely up for debate. Listen, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to start anything. I just... I just feel like they're in the neighborhood. I uh, hope you guys like it. I'm excited to see y'all in Arlington again next week. Much love. Your friendly neighborhood townie, Allie. Uh, thank you for that. And she sent us this amazing fan art. Um, they, were, they were the ones I already showed you. Do you want me to bring them back up? or I'll put them in the video. For yeah, sure. put them in the video. They'll definitely be in the video um, version of this. Uh, I think I'm going to try to... Someone suggested, too, that uh, maybe I need to make a, a database of all of the, the goth drawings we've been sent to put somewhere. So yeah. that might be something I, I might be collecting them all again to uh, <laughs> to put them in some sort of uh, online gallery. For yeah, people to no, view. for sure. Because we have a lot of going. These ones, though, are fantastic. So uh, thank you for those, Allie. And it was great seeing you in Arlington and everyone else we got to see in Arlington. Yeah, thank you, everybody that came out to Arlington. We had a great time, and it was great to meet you. Very fun time. Thanks so much for listening to The Josh Johnson Show. We had a great time recording. I hope you had a great time listening. If you are looking to catch up with us on any of the socials, you can find me at Josh Johnson Comedy on Instagram, at Josh Johnson on Twitter, Josh J Comedy on Facebook, and Josh Johnson Comedy on TikTok and YouTube, where we're going to be posting clips of the show. You might be watching one right now. And if you're looking for Logan... 
You can follow me on Instagram at Logan M. Nielsen. And if you want to get into the mailbag like those wonderful people there, you can email us joshjohnsonshow at gmail.com. And if you want some bonus content, you can join our Patreon, patreon.com slash joshjohnsonshow. Oh, and we got a live show coming up at the end of uh, July yeah. in New York. A live podcast. So if you're in the area, come see us. Doing it. Living. Living. Forever. Together. Together forever and ever. Two parts. The song I sing every time I see Josh. And I hate it. I don't like it. Mm, he Does doesn't it anyway. like it. He doesn't like it. But doesn't care. I tell him nope. to stop and he won't. Not getting rid of me. Not getting rid of me, you little, you little scamp. All right. I'm like a growth. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah? Okay. So I'll stop recording now. <laughs>